Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on ecology is directed towards students completing the junior cycle science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, five things we'll be revising in this video are what the terms ecology and ecosystem mean, along with identifying examples of ecosystems. We'll discuss the type of organisms we find in ecosystems and draw food chains to describe energy flow within an ecosystem. Lastly, we'll identify examples of adaptions, competition and interdependence. So what do the terms ecology and ecosystem mean? Ecology is the study of how organisms interact not only with each other, but also with their environment. An ecosystem is a particular area where living things interact with each other and their environment. Learn off these two definitions and take note of how similar they are. There are many different ecosystems in our natural world. We'll go through six of them now. In each of these ecosystems, think of all the different types of living things, both plants and animals, that can be found in them. Desert ecosystems can be found in many places across the globe. Some deserts are hot and sandy, others are rocky, but what deserts have in common is that they're very dry. So plants and animals here need to be able to withstand this harsh environment. The Sahara is the largest hot desert on Earth. Tropical rainforests are dense areas of forest where temperatures are hot, but because lots of rain falls here, it means rainforest ecosystems have the most diversity of living things on Earth. The Amazon rainforest is the world's largest tropical rainforest. Polar ecosystems are found at both ends of the globe, the Arctic and Antarctic. Polar ecosystems are like freezing cold deserts. They don't have lots of vegetation because of the cold, but also because there's very little rainfall, only snow and ice. Freshwater ecosystems consist of all the world's rivers, lakes and bogs because they contain water with no salt. Marine ecosystems consist of oceans and seas because their water is full of salt, meaning different types of living things live there. Finally, the ecosystem we'll concentrate on are grasslands. These ecosystems are where grass is the most abundant plant type, and right now much of Ireland is in grassland. There are many types of organisms that can be found in an ecosystem, and we tend to categorise them depending on how they obtain their food. The first type of organism is a producer. Producers are living things that can create their own food. Think of plants. Plants are producers because they can make their own food from sunlight by carrying out photosynthesis. Consumers, on the other hand, are living things that can't create their own food from photosynthesis. Instead, they must move around the ecosystem to find food. Animals are consumers because they need to eat plants or other animals they find in the ecosystem. There are three types of consumer we need to know. A carnivore is a consumer that eats only animals, they're meat eaters. A herbivore is a consumer that eats only plants and an omnivore is a consumer that eats both plants and animals. Aside from producers and consumers, ecosystems also need decomposers. Decomposers are living things that feed on dead organisms. When something dies, it begins to rot. This is because decomposers, like earthworms, flies, bacteria and fungi, break them down. Decomposers are really important for the ecosystem because not only do they stop dead things from piling up around us, but they also recycle nutrients back into the environment, which we'll discuss more in the carbon cycle topic. You need to be able to outline how energy enters an ecosystem for living things to use. The sun provides an ecosystem with all of its energy in the form of light energy. Producers in the ecosystem carry out photosynthesis and this converts the sun's light energy to chemical energy within the plant. The chemical energy in the plant is then available for animal consumers in the ecosystem to acquire by eating the plant. We use something called a food chain to describe this energy flow through organisms in an ecosystem. Let's take a look at one example of a food chain. Grass is the first organism in this food chain. It uses photosynthesis to take in the sun's energy and stores it as chemical energy. Grass is eaten by a snail, so energy in the grass will now pass into the snail. A snail is eaten by a blackbird, so energy from the snail passes into the blackbird. And lastly, a fox eats the blackbird, so the fox will acquire the energy that was in the blackbird. The different stages of any food chain are called trophic levels. In this food chain, for example, grass occupies the first trophic level, the snail is in the second trophic level, the blackbird is in the third trophic level, and the fox occupies the fourth trophic level. The organisms we find in the first trophic level of a food chain is a producer, because it can make its own food. The organism in the second trophic level is called the primary consumer because it eats the producer. The organism in the third trophic level is called the secondary consumer and the final organism in the food chain is known as the top consumer because no other organism eats it. 
An important point to note is that food chains are rarely longer than four organisms. The reason for this is all to do with energy. Between each trophic level, there's a 90% loss of energy. To put this into context, when the snail eats the grass, only 10% of the energy that was in the grass actually makes it into the snail. The remaining 90% is lost as heat to the environment. Again, when the blackbird eats the snail, only 10% of the energy that was in the snail makes it to the blackbird, and when the fox eats the blackbird, only 10% of the energy in the blackbird makes it to the fox. This huge reduction in available energy between each trophic level limits the amount of organisms that can exist in a food chain. Only 0.1% of the energy that was in the grass makes it through the food chain to the fox, so there wouldn't be enough energy to sustain another organism after the fox. If you take any two consumers in a food chain, the organism that's eaten is known as the prey, and the organism that catches, kills, and then eats the other is known as the predator. On screen, you can see that the mouse is the prey and the hawk is the predator. Living things over time through evolution can develop adaptions that make it easier for them to survive in their ecosystem. An adaption of grasshoppers and caterpillars are their green colour. This helps them to blend in with grass and evade detection by predators. Many birds have excellent eyesight, and this makes it easier for them to spot prey and acquire food. Plants also have adaptions. Thistles and brambles have thorns to stop animals from grazing them, while trees have a large network of roots to help them absorb as much water and minerals as possible. Another interaction of living things in an ecosystem is by competition. Competition is when living things struggle with each other for a resource that's in scarce supply. Animals compete with each other for the likes of food. You can see these sheep in the image competing with each other to eat as much grass as possible. Competition sometimes results in a physical battle between living things, such as battles for territory or mating rights. In this image, we can see that plants compete for light and space. Trees go tall above other trees so that they can get more light. They also compete for their own space so that their roots can spread out to absorb more water, minerals and nutrients than other plants. Just note that competition does not always have to be a physical battle between organisms. Finally, interdependence is an interaction between two types of living things where they both depend on each other for their survival. In the example on screen, bees rely on the flowers of plants so that they can acquire food. The plant also needs the bee to spread pollen and seeds so that the plant can reproduce. If either the plant or bee somehow disappeared from the ecosystem, they wouldn't be able to survive. Well, that's it for this part one video on ecology. Make sure you're revised over each of these points in preparation for your exams and make sure you're familiar with each of the key words you can see on screen. If you found the video helpful, make sure to check out our part two video where we discuss how to carry out a habitat study. Best of luck with your revision.